Good morning, Year 8. Hope everybody's okay and having, you know, not finding the working from home too uh, troublesome. So today we're going to count, we're going to recap over two subjects in one le one go. That is looking at how we represent text in a computer and how we represent images. Uh, I think once you'll see these slides, they'll look fairly familiar, and I don't think you'll have any difficulty doing the activities either. Obviously, as always, feel free to give me a shout. So the first thing we're going to look at is an introduction to ASCII which stands for American Standard Code for Information Interchange. Our objectives are to learn what it is and why we use it. You're going to look at doing some conversions and you're going to possibly, if we get time, I'm not sure that's going to be relevant, we're going to look at how it's structured. So what is ASCII? Computers only work with ones and zeros to be discovered using binary. That's because the CPUs can only understand an input of a one or a zero. But obviously when we're writing, we need to be able to use the letters that we use, our alphabet, other alphabets like Japanese characters, Chinese characters, Urdu characters, etc. <clears throat> but we're going to concentrate just on our Western letters for now. But ASCII converts the binary numbers into different symbols, letters, and deanery numbers. Deanery means decimal, so that's numbers 0 to 9. And this one, we can convert the letters into binary using a character set, which shows the letters of the alphabet alongside the binary code. Most common one we use is 7 bit ASCII, that's the original one. This allows 128 letters or symbols. Seven bits is inconvenience. We just add uh, a zero to make it an eight bit number. But extended ASCII, the A4 uses the full eight bit character set and has 256 different characters, in which allows us to do sort of like accented E's or a copyright sign. So extended ASCII is mainly aimed at European or Western English languages um, and stuff like Spanish and German, Portuguese that can use our character sets as well. Here's an example of the code. So let's lowercase a is the ASCII code 097, lowercase b 098. Uh, the binary values therefore is 97. This isn't news to you guys, you've seen this before, so I'm not going to spend ages looking at this. Well, I'm going to ask you to do the activity sheet though. It's on, show my homework, and then you can convert the message again. If you've got a really good memory, unlike me, because I can't remember what it, exactly what it says, you'll be able to do it quite easily. Otherwise, you know, you guys can look back on this on, on the previous slide to look at the code. The code's on there as well. I don't think you guys will find it too difficult. So once you've done that, we're going to move on to data representation part three, which is images. Again, this will look very familiar. So the basic element of this lesson is to look at what a pixel was. So but when I show you this picture, this will start ringing a few bells. So images, like a JPEG file, they are basically just a big collection of individual pixels. <clears throat> the greater the resolution means the smaller and more pixels fit on an image and the more detail you can put in. But in order to understand how images are stored in binary, it's just you have to remember it's basically made up of little squares. So this should look familiar. This is a, this is a, um, a single bit image because it only has a one or a zero because we only need black or white. So this, this example, we use zero for white and we use one for black. So the first line is zero, 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 zero. Next line is zero, one, zero, one, zero, et cetera, et cetera. I'm sure you get the idea. <clears throat> what I'd like to do this last time you did the binary code for um, an image. There was a smiley face and then there was a Dalek, I believe was a really complicated one. This time I'm going to just put some graph paper on a piece of A4 for you guys to um, print out if you can, if not, you can replicate it or you might be lucky enough to have some graph paper but somehow create your own little image in black and white and then put the binary code on formula like on this one uh, you've done it before i don't think you guys will find it too difficult so all i'll say is as always feel free to re-watch the video as many times as you need to and if you have any questions drop me a line uh, that's about it really we've done all this stuff before i don't think it's anything particularly taxing the ASCII table is on the worksheet. This one, you know, it's one and zero, so black and white, I think you can cope with that. So I look forward to seeing what sort of images you can put together. If you have got Excel, or you want to use an online spreadsheet or something, you can produce something in those like we did in the lessons. Um, I did think they were quite handy, but obviously not everyone's got access to a computer. So feel free just to use pen and paper. If you want to add some color in, not, this is one of the one occasions where I'd say black and white is probably easier, just because Going to sort of three, four bit color depth is going to make life a bit more, a bit more spicy, and um, we'll probably do that next lesson. But like, I hope you guys take care.
Uh, as always, if you've got any questions, give me a shout. Otherwise, I will catch you next week. Bye.